Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell, I'm President of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and through this series of programs, we highlight the work done by nonprofit organizations in our area. Uh, today, my guest is, uh, is Kat Hardy, uh, who's Executive Director of Delmarva Education Foundation, and we're going to shine the Community Foundation Spotlight on uh, DEF today, Kat. Uh, first, What's a DEF? What's a Delmarva Education Foundation? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the Delmarva Education Foundation is a nonprofit organization that is unique to the region. Uh, it's not part of a large organization. It's by local people for local people here on Delmarva. I think what we're best known for is helping people find money to continue their education. We actually have a bigger mission, and I'm afraid your eyes will roll back if I tell you the big mission. Uh, but what we are trying to do is raise the level of educational attainment mm -hmm. and increase incomes for the people mm -hmm. in this region. Mm -hmm. And we, we still, the reality of it is we have a lot, a lot of families that it's the first of a family going to college. So, so uh, finding the money that's necessary in these, these times uh, and, and making that transition to college is, is challenging not only for the young people, for the, for the family. Yes. It, actually, if you look at the numbers um, for this region, and DEF dis defines our region as the seven counties from Sussex County all the way south mm -hmm. down through uh, Northampton, Virginia, because this is the Salisbury greater metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. So within that region, the um, level of educational attainment, the number of people who have gone beyond high school, is about 21 percent. Whereas for the states as a whole, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, it's 28 percent. Mm -hmm. So we are significantly below our state average in terms of educational attainment around here. Mm -hmm. And then also in terms of income this region is below state average, whether you're talking Delaware, Maryland, or Virginia. Uh, this area is about one third, about one third more people live below the poverty level. So um, DEF is trying to help more people go beyond high school, figuring that then they will be able to make more money and that that will then improve standards of living for the individuals and for their families mm -hmm. and for the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. And, and there is obviously a very high correlation between level of education and, and lifetime income. Uh, I think I saw something recently, just getting a high school diploma as opposed to a dropout was a difference of something like $225,000, $250,000 in income over a course of someone's lifetime. It can make a dramatic difference. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I don't want, we don't want to say that it's only college. Uh, mm -hmm. There can be uh, vocational training, there can be certificate training. Um, uh, for many people, college is not the answer. For some people, it is. Uh, but generally, education beyond high school is really important to being able to make a living wage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, who benefits from DEF's efforts, and uh, why should uh, they, they learn more about what you do? Well, um, let's see now. Students benefit uh, because we can help them with advice and helping them find money and also how to do it. Parents benefit because we can help their children. Uh, uh, educators benefit because we can help their students. Employers benefit because we are essentially trying to increase the capacity of the workforce mm -hmm. in this region. Uh, and then people who are maybe retired and don't personally involve themselves with education educational issues, I think, can understand that uh, DEF's goals of raising the level of educational attainment and income benefit the whole community. Well, and uh, as we get older, we're <laughs> going to be dependent on the level of education of those young people who may be caring for us in, <laughs> in one way or another. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it is important to all of us. I, I notice your mission is to improve ed educational opportunities for residents of all ages on the lower Delmarva Peninsula using a regional approach in focusing on access and quality. It, it's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. So, that is a mouthful. So. And, and, and I think I need to stress that that's, the, that's our long-term vision. We are small. We are young. 
uh, it's got a big name, Delmarva Education Foundation, sounds very big and stable, but the fact of the matter is right now it's four people working part-time uh, in an organization that's n not even 10 years old. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, give, give us a little, give our viewers a little history of, of, uh, of DEF, uh, you know, where it came from and Okay, yeah. sure, sure. And, this and is where, a, you, where you've been. This is a story dear to my heart because I have to talk about my dad. Yes. I have to talk about yes. my dad. Um, so I've been uh, executive director for two years, um, but I've been hearing about DEF for far more than 10 years because it was a, a brainchild, the brainchild of my dad, who himself uh, didn't have enough money to go to college. Mm -hmm and went through college and medical school and post-medical training, all on scholarships that were given to him, made possible by people in his community who wanted to help him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he never forgot that what he was able to do in life, which was significant. I mean, uh, he retired from, as, uh, from NIH, National Institutes of Health, uh, from as deputy director of the Institute for Child Health and Human Development. He was a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then he came over to the shore and became Worcester County Health Officer mm -hmm. and retired from that. And so Salisbury and the Eastern Shore... That's how I shore first met your dad. <laughs> was it, it was as, as he adopted this region, mm -hmm. uh, lived here for about 30 years. Um, uh, he's still alive. He's, now he's living up near my brother and sister in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm outside Philadelphia. But anyway, uh, he appreciated Salisbury and saw that how he might be able to help was to create an organization that would enable people who wanted to help others improve their education, mm -hmm. do so in a tax-deductible manner. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he founded this 501c3 nonprofit, which is what DEF is. It's a vehicle for addressing these issues. And he did not do it alone. Um, it couldn't exist until, <clears throat> excuse me, it couldn't exist until he talked to some other people into joining him. Mm -hmm. And so it has a board of directors. My father was president for a couple of years until he was able to get Mike Pennington, who mm -hmm. is now the president of the board of directors. He's executive director of the Tri-County County, mm -hmm. County Council. Uh, and a number of other people. Bill Wyatt is our vice president. He's a retired businessman here in Salisbury. Uh, but it has a board that includes people from Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, all walks of life. Uh, and so it's been in existence now. Uh, and we are, as I say, still at a fledgling stage, but beginning to get a reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to the point now where people come to us uh, and call us when they need help, either individuals who are looking for scholarships uh, or schools that want us to come and make a presentation to mm -hmm. have our advisors to come down and talk about um, how they might be able to, how individuals might be able to continue their education. Uh, and then we're also used and developing really a, a strong, good, collaborative relationship with guidance counselors mm -hmm. in our region because what we hope to do is relieve them of some of the um, nitpicky kind of burdensome work, uh, administrative clerical work, of gathering all the information about all the scholarships that are available. Now with information technology and computers being what they are, DEF has developed a database of scholarships, put it online, searchable you can I, I think and I hope most all of our community foundation spot uh, community foundations uh, scholarships are listed on there <laughs> <laughs> a reasonable question yes they are yeah. we provide links um, to all the scholarships that we have been able to find and there's like about 800 uh, that are specifically targeted to people who want to go to school uh, who are either from here mm -hmm. or want to go to school here. Mm -hmm. And, and in reality, I, I felt that there, there's money out there. If, if, if young people want to go to college, uh, you know, certainly the cost of college education has escalated tremendously. But uh, particularly young people who have a reasonable expectation and are willing to go, particularly if they're willing to go to a local college, uh, there, there's money out there. 
There is money out there. This okay. our database has got at least a million dollars in it, or uh, describes a million dollars mm -hmm. worth of available money, and and possibly more like two million dollars. Some of these, you, the scholarships that the community foundation has are endowed, and mm -hmm. so you can count on them. Mm -hmm. a, a student can count on a community foundation, a scholarship that's at the community foundation. But there are a lot of other little scholarships that are for which the money are raised every year: mm -hmm. bake sales, golf tournaments, um, you know, donations that sororities and professional societies put up, and th those dollars fluctuate. That's why I'm mm -hmm. a little unclear as to exactly how many dollars. And mm -hmm. I can say it's over a million. And, and that's where an organization like yours is really helping, because that's one of the challenges that uh, that guidance counselors face is knowing whether a scholarship is still available, still exists, how much money is available, and that sort of thing. And it's a, certainly a service that DEF is providing as, a, as kind of a, 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 a broker for, for that information. You've got it. You've got it. And that's why we really hope that they know we exist. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pat 14 <laughs> for putting us on TV. <laughs> Yeah. We want guidance counselors to know that we exist, and we also want the scholarship donors to know that mm -hmm. we exist so that they realize that by sending us the information, we'll put it on our website, and then it becomes available to all the guidance mm -hmm. counselors, all the students, all the schools, all the parents. One-stop shopping. Mm -hmm. And if they'd like to learn how they can make their scholarship truly permanent, they call me. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, and uh, that's uh, we, we're engaging, engaging in some more partnerships between DEF and the Community Foundation. Yes, that's what's ahead that is very exciting as far as DEF mm -hmm. is concerned. And I hope that it will be as every bit as exciting for Community Foundation. Yeah. When, as we, shall we talk about we're going to move? Well, Ready? sure, why not? That, that's toward the end of my questions, but we can take them in any order we want. Let's cue the move straight. We're about to become neighbors. We're about to become neighbors. Uh, but before talking about the move, I have to say that where we are now is in the Wacomico County Public Library. And it has been fabulous. Mm -hmm. We've been there for you know, almost 10 years. And uh, the library is a great place to work, centrally located. People can come find us, and also very helpful people. But they need the space. We understand. Fortunately, the Community Foundation has its nonprofit resource center with one suite remaining, <laughs> <laughs> which we will be occupying uh, in the middle of June. Mm -hmm. And that will enable DEF to be right there learning from and contributing to that little hot spot of creative nonprofit activity that the Community Foundation is fostering. Uh, and also working with you at the Community Foundation to draw attention to the benefits of making scholarship endowments, mm -hmm. which DEF can then promote mm -hmm. and Absolutely. tell students about, Absolutely. tell guidance counselors about. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, an, there's an opportunity there for the Community Foundation and DEF to work together to try to increase the pool of dollars and then make sure they get used. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be fabulously wealthy to, uh, to create a fund that will really uh, impact a young person's life. Uh, you know, our, our minimum for a scholarship, uh, endowed scholarship is $10,000. And, and, a, and a gift of $10,000 might be as a memorial to some loved one or, you know, who knows what your motivation is. But that will award a $500 scholarship every year, forever. So, so it, it can be there to, to help generations of kids, of young people. And uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, $500 is not a very big scholarship, but for a young person who goes out, if, they're, if, if they're, they really show the initiative, uh, you, they can cobble together five or six of those $500 scholarships, and the next thing you know, they're covering a significant part of their college education. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It does frequently, you, you do need to put together more than one mm -hmm. scholarship, and that's, that's how you do it block by block. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, we're, we're, we're excited to have DEF becoming part of our, our family there and uh, looking, looking forward to your move. So. They're very nice facilities too. So. You did a good job building so. that space. 
So. Well, it, it was again, it was uh, you know, it's something that we were able to do because of the generosity generosity of our donors. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it it's people out in the community who are willing and interested in doing charitable giving that makes what you do and what we do possible. So. And this is a generous community. It is. It is. So let's let's go back and, and talk to uh, uh, you know many for many students, many families. It's a first of uh, of their family to go to college. Uh, and I know for a while you had a Jack Kent Cook Foundation scholarship to uh, expand your college access efforts. How do you go about preparing a family and a, and a young person for that transition? Well. Of course, talking to me, you are not talking to one of the actual advisors. Sure. Uh, our advisors, who have been doing this for a lot longer than me, who comes out of uh, television and media and working at UMES as a, as a staff person, mm -hmm. so I don't personally do it, but what, what our advisors do when they go into the schools, and it, we do, actually, we're invited into mm -hmm. the schools to meet with the students, um, is I think first, try to start as early as possible so that they take hard courses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you do that f from the beginning so that you try to develop an academic record mm -hmm. um, that will support college. Um, and you also start to think in terms of long term, start to try to plan ahead. Uh, and that's not the culture of our current media environment, <laughs> to put it mildly, uh, because uh, post post secondary education requires planning ahead, setting a goal, making some uh, sh short term sacrifice, uh, near term sacrifices, mm -hmm. and so thinking about that, you want to get people thinking about it as early as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And then make them make whoever it is aware of the resources that are available in the community to support those aspirations. Mm -hmm. uh, your specific home environment may not support those aspirations, but there is a wider community that does support those aspirations. And I think trying to help people get in touch with that wider support can be a really important sure. way of getting started. There are some great uh, <coughs> youth programs out in our community throughout the area that you know can support those types of aspirations for young people. We recently uh, had a program that featured the Salisbury Horizons program. But but even if you think about the you know Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, the some of the youth club programs, uh, the Big Brother, Big Sister programs, the mentoring programs, they all will help a young person prepare for those types of decisions mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. get them thinking longer term. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, you talked a little bit about this, but I, I don't want to get too far away from it. How are you funded? I know at one point you had a Jack Kent Cook Foundation grant. You, you have some local donors, but yes. who uh, foots the bill? Uh, that is a reasonable question. It, when I describe us as a, uh, as a seedling, as an organizational seedling, I have to say that right now, these are challenging times. We are in something of a drought. Uh, so we are looking for grants and we are looking for donations. And I'm hoping that what's coming down the pike in terms of college access grant money, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that we will be able to pull some of those dollars in because as we st we're putting our primary emphasis on our college and career access program work mm -hmm. because I think there are dollars out there to support those efforts and and now that we have built a reputation for having a regional impact our target area has 440,000 people in it and so that's enough people to be able to attract the attention of some national foundation dollars. That was my father's dream, was that, was that uh, the Lumina Foundation and the Abel Foundation and the Gates Foundation might be more likely to pay attention to an organization that represented a bigger region mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. would, could draw their attention of a particular county. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me just do a quick break here to remind our viewers that you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight. 
Uh, I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation of Eastern Shore. And my guest today is Kat Harding. And Kat's the executive director of the Delmarva Education Foundation. We call it DEF. And uh, uh, we're talking about DEF's efforts uh, to uh, uh, help families and young people uh, transition to college or post-secondary training. It might be trade or technical or career training of, of some other type. It's uh, uh, you know, certainly very badly needed by a lot, of, uh, a lot of young people. It's an opportunity for them. Uh, can you point to any success stories? Oh, I have some good ones. Thank you for asking me. I can give you two students. <laughs> I'm trying students. to follow the script that <laughs> you gave you. me. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can give you two students, a mother, a guidance counselor, and a school. You pick. Dear to my heart uh, is a student who uh, had lost her mother, and, so she, and she was not from this area, and so she was really struggling uh, and ended up having to drop out of UMES uh, because she didn't have enough money to continue. And uh, that, that's how I met her, because I was working at UMES at the time. Uh, and um, she, had, she was working at night in a convenience store, trying to just make enough money to try to get back to school. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, call up my dad. <clears throat> He's building this database of scholarships. So she went up, she went up to the library, and she looked. And lo and behold, she did, in fact, find scholarships to go back to school. She graduated. She got a good job. She's now working at a bank, uh, has become a DEF donor, wonderful. and is now on our board. Wonderful. Real success story. Yeah, she's a so. wonderful success story. She's just a classic example of somebody who took advantage of opportunities that were available, did not give up. Mm -hmm. Uh, it took her longer than she had expected it would, but boy, she is really now very happy, very happy. Mm -hmm. So that's one, mm -hmm. uh, and she's uh, still in the area. And then another one, another story that I like is uh, of a young man who put his pot of scholarships together first, you know, and, and in fact put together 17 scholarships. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of scholarship <laughs> applications, of scholarship. Yeah, and I sit on a couple of scholarship committees, and I, I see the amount of work that goes into those. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he didn't find them all through the DEF database. I think he found five through the DEF mm -hmm. database. But at any rate, he credits DEF for helping him get over the hump. Uh, and he went to Salisbury University, and then he got his master's and came and was working in the area, and then... Uh, Split has left town. He was doing very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, just grew wings and flew away. And the reason I like to use him as well as the earlier one is that DEF doesn't care whether you go or stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and because uh, our sense is we just want to help you get the wings to, to uh, be more comfortable yeah. and to achieve your dreams. Uh, and I think that this community benefits as well if it can be a nest from which people fly off and do well sure. as if it draws people here. Yeah. So anyway, so those are my two students. Yeah. Then I have uh, another example of a mother who homeschooled her children, homeschooled, and each one of them homeschooled four children, and each one of them, when they got to be college age, she sent them off to DEF and said, go talk to them about getting money and finding money for college because she didn't want to be the one, she was tired of drilling it into their heads, mm -hmm. and she figured that she could send them over to us and that we would do it mm -hmm. for her. So, uh, but she, it was sort of a rite of passage. Okay, now it's time for you to go over and talk to DEF mm -hmm. about going to college. So you don't just work with uh, young people in public schools or private schools, a, a home school, it, it doesn't make any difference to you? No, and don't just work with young people. I mean, okay. you don't have to be young. Okay. No, okay, so that is the homeschool mother. Then there is the guidance counselor uh, down in Somerset County who, is, who says that she has stopped gathering all that information about scholarships herself because it is a tremendous amount of time. She'd rather spend the time paying attention to the students, to the children, to the kids. And she says when it comes time to look for scholarships, we just go look at the DEF database. Great, great. Very yeah. good. Yeah. That's what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Well, great. We're running short of time. I want to get a couple things in real quickly. 
how do people find you? What, do you have a website, a phone number? Let's give them that information. Uh, and our friends here at PAC14 will be sure to show it on the screen. Thank you. Yes, our website is www.delmarvaed.org. And our telephone number is 410-219-3336. And that will stay the same through the move. Okay. And if somebody, if if you if you kind of pick somebody's curiosity and they'd like to know how to help, they could contact you to volunteer. Yes, they can volunteer, and they can also. This is the founder's dream, which is to say, if they have resources, maybe not big enough to endow a scholarship, mm -hmm. but if they just want to support the increase in educational attainment and the increase in incomes mm -hmm. in this region through education, if they send the money to DEF. We will use it to promote our database and promote our college access and career mm -hmm. access counseling. It's a way to invest in uh, improving the educational level of the, the whole region. And keep the dollars here and not have them go out to Annapolis and hope they'll come back around or up to Wilm or Delver and hope they'll come back yeah. down or down to Nor uh, Richmond and hope mm -hmm. it'll come back up. It's just local dollars supporting local people. Absolutely. I, I'm glad you made that point. That's mm -hmm. it's very, very important, Kat. Quickly, long-term plans or goals for DEF? Thank you for asking that question. Our dream is to not only get into all the schools, but also to get into all the libraries. Because the libraries are where the adult learners are, and we had such a good experience in the Wicomico County mm -hmm. Library. Not necessarily having physical locations, but putting volunteers with DEF information and computer access to our database in the libraries, helping people uh, on Saturdays and in the evenings, you know, I don't want to say round the clock, but yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, your database is in, in, it's on the internet. It's accessible 24 hours a day. True. You don't have to have us. You don't have to come to us. You can do it by yourself. But there are some people who like to have somebody beside them when sure. they push the buttons, you know, yeah. and who need help at least getting started. And yeah. so we want to provide hands-on help where it's needed. Great. So, well, Kat, I really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us today. Uh, you, you, you and your board are doing great work at DEF, and uh, we're certainly pleased with the partnership that uh, the Community Foundation has had with you, and we're looking forward to continuing that. Thank you for having me, Spicer. Okay, great. Uh, you've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight, and today our spotlight's been shining on Delmarva Education Foundation. Uh, it's a group of local citizens that really are making a difference in the level of educational attainment of our young people and our citizens at all ages. Uh, if you'd like more information, uh, contact Delmarva Education Foundation. Learn how you can support their efforts. It's just another opportunity for you to make a difference in our community by volunteering, by getting involved, um, whether it's through DEF or any of hundreds of nonprofit organizations. If you've ever wondered how you can get involved, go to the Community Foundation's shorecan.org volunteer center. Uh, we have a www.shorecan.org uh, uh, volunteer center. It's a virtual website where you can search volunteer opportunities in the community and uh, get involved. Make a difference. You really can. And thanks for watching PAC 14. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC 14? To get started, contact us at 410 677 5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC 14 is a great way to connect with your community.